What's up guys? Diplex here again. Welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2 and Blue Dawn Rise of Nationality. Super excited to be back here again with another video. So it's finally Saturday. I have four videos planned for this weekend, so look forward to that. I think we're gonna get some squad ops going later today, so that's gonna be pretty damn good. Hope everyone's having a good week. Hope everyone's having a good January so far. Uh, if you're doing something special this year, let me know in the comment section down below. I've got a lot of people on Snapchat telling me that they're like going into the military. Some are even going out. We are here in uh, the 80s. This is a battle that is going to take place in the Kost province of Afghanistan. This is sometime in like mid to late 80s before the end of the Soviet Afghan war. If you want to know more about this war, which I think a lot of people don't generally uh, know or think about, because when you say the war in Afghanistan, you think of the uh, uh, the recently ended war in Afghanistan, so to speak. So I'm going to put a link to a video from Feature History down in the description box below. I think you should watch it before you watch this video because it gives you a good idea of the war. And I don't know this guy or I, I mean, I've never spoken to him or anything, but uh, I wanted to plug his channel because I think this guy gets way too fuse. Uh, views, uh, views, <laughs> views in comparison to what effort and time he puts into these videos. And it's so nice when someone out there voluntarily wants to help us know history. I think it's a great thing. So check out the link in the description box below. Or if you're impatient, watch this first, then watch that. Or not impatient, but you know, whatever your priorities are, you know, I like to know a little bit before I visualize an event like I'd like to know about the war before I see a battle so then I can really understand the whole context so in today's battle we're gonna be uh, following a uh, Russian mechanized platoon uh, as they search and destroy Mujahideen uh, presence in the area namely this village to be exact they've got reports of there being uh, stored ammunition and weapons here, and also a large Mujahideen presence. They're not sure how many fighters there are here, but they're going to come pretty well prepared. So we've got the mechanized convoy arriving back here. We have two BMP-2s. Uh, they were introduced uh, later on in the uh, Afghan war, so to speak. And we also have a truck carrying infantry as well as a BTR-80. So this is at least 1995-86. So these vehicles were more common in the conflict at that time. Um, the BMP-1 and BTR-70 were more common earlier in the war, so to speak. But, uh, oh, look at this. We have a little guest watching the convoy. Ah, hello there. He's there to make sure they know the way. And it looks like they do know the way. Perhaps he told them <laughs> about the, the Mujahideen presence in the village. So we've got two, like, separate compounds here. Actually, one of these walled areas or uh, enclosed area is technically a compound, right? With several buildings in it. So we've got several compounds. The Soviet convoy is approaching the objective. I think they're going to go ahead and uh, spread the vehicles out a little bit. They're not going to stop in a column formation, so to speak. That's not very tactically advantageous, so to speak. So one of the BMP, the lead vehicle... It's going to continue down the main road. Um, and it's going to position itself here to the right. The second BMP is going to drive down to the left. Oh, and the infantry is going to go ahead and dismount. They've made contact with the uh, Mujahideen forces inside the village. They're going to open up with some serious fire. That's going to collapse part of the walls here uh, and weaken the defenses. BTR, BTR, <laughs> the BTR-80 <laughs> is going to stop a little bit behind here to kind of uh, finalize the uh, triangle formation. The truck is going to drive up to the left a little bit there. We're going to go ahead and uh, dismount the driver. We don't need him to stay in the vehicle. So uh, some of the soldiers, one squad to be exact, from the BTR-80 is going to remain by the vehicles. And we're just going to go ahead and set them uh, up, give them some uh, positions that are adequate uh, to their task, which is to provide uh, some infantry protection or infantry uh, fire support for the convoy. We don't want to leave this, these vehicles out here without any infantry because um, 
the majority of the uh, dismounted infantry will now be actually heading into the village to clear out all the compounds. Oh, someone went in and shot a fighter inside. And that was it. Job done. And the infantry is going to continue. But there are a lot of jobs, so to speak, ahead of us here. That wasn't the only task of the day. Some of the fighters are going to run out. It's going to be a very hectic and gruesome compound clearing uh, um, situation here. This close quarter combat is ruthless. So I think that's about... No, there's more fighters over here. Do you hear that vehicle? Oh yeah, there's a van coming down the road up here. With more fighters. They must have uh, been told about the uh, incoming convoy. So the infantry is going to dismount. They also have rocket infantry. That's deadly. RPG 7s and uh, light machine guns. They're going to take some serious fire from one of the BMP 2s back there, though. So they're going to be turned into absolutely nothing in the open. These guys definitely have a chance in a more of a guerrilla style fighting. But the. Uh, oh, that car is going to take a lot of fire. Oh, it's just going to get demolished by a whole platoon of infantry and a BMP 2. Uh, yeah, look at all the uh, the bullet holes there. And the engine's gonna catch on fire. That actually took me by surprise. I didn't expect that at all. Cool. Alright, so the infantry is moving up. Reinforcements should be here any minute now with called in reinforcements. We're moving on to the second part of the village. Not sure if they've dealt dealt with all the fighters over here though uh, there could still be fighters alive and active in that area so we'll have to check that out later one of the compounds down here have been cleared and we're moving from building to building here but we are efficient we're taking casualties but uh, the, the the Soviets are efficient indeed okay we're calling back a squad now not sure why um, Have we spotted any fighters around here? So far, so good. But the fact that reinforcements did arrive up here uh, tells us a different story. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. We've got plenty of fighters coming in here. Arriving out in the open. Dismounted infantry. But they're going to stand a way better chance here. Perhaps not the soldiers out in the open. Or should I call them fighters? I don't think they have any real army training. I suppose you're a soldier, not primarily because you have a weapon and you fight, but because you have uh, military training and because you're part of a military formation. Soldiers are troops of the government, I'd say. A fighter is someone who, who fights. Um, so I'd more formally call them fighters. Despite their... Uh, training. CIA training to be exact. So the Mujahideen fighting uh, against the Soviets in the 80s are very different to the Taliban's of uh, the 90s and uh, the ones who the uh, coalition fought against in, uh, in recent years. Yes, reinforcements have arrived. There's not going to be much left of these uh, houses and compounds once the BMP-2s are done with them. But they're not taking any risks. They've taken plenty of Soviet casualties already, so there's no reason to be uh, careful. I mean, there, there's all the reason to be careful. There's no reason to be cautious or <sighs> careful with the buildings. That's kind of what I meant to say. Looks like two vehicles have arrived here as well. Two civilian vehicles, and they're taking fire. We're going to go ahead and uh, dismount whoever's left in here. Oh, boy. They drove a little too far, but they did stop behind cover, but they didn't expect... I, I suppose there's no cell phones, so the, the, the fighters back here couldn't really call 
Um, anyone in the car and say, dude, uh, yeah, they're, they're parked down the road. Stop where you are. They just heard about the fighting and they wanted to join in. When you, when you catch, I mean, I suppose in a moment like this, when you're trying to win a conflict or when you're trying to kick out a, an enemy force from an area, you'd want to fight them when you can. And if there's a column or a large presence in the area, like right now, then you're going to want to muster your forces to that region to do the, to do the battling, right? So I suppose they were a little misinformed, but they did dismount infantry. And interestingly enough, we're going to be seeing a lot of Lee Enfields. There's a, there were a lot of Lee Enfields involved in the conflict. Let me tell you, I've seen so many pictures of soldiers with British Lee Enfields. Even a few PPSHs as well. So we see a few of those. Uh, so it looks like the Soviet infantry is going to finish clearing this um, area out. Looking very good. I'm not sure they've uh, completely secured the other compounds, but I do think they have. There are fighters remaining here. There are Mujahideen warriors still in the area. Um, and we, we're going to take a look at casualties later. And this, this village is just turning into scrap right now. Oh, look at this. He knows he's here. This squad leader, a sergeant willing to earn a medal. A hero of the Soviet Union, perhaps. And his fellow other squad sergeant. Oh, he's patching up. He's been hit. Oh, no. Oh, they're going to catch him. He was trying to withdraw to friendly fighters. To fight another day, I think the situation inside the village here is pretty grim when you're up against vehicles like that. So that's uh, something you'd want to prefer not doing. But they run the risk here of attracting more warriors. And they have. There are Mujah more Mujahideen fighters on the way as we speak from nearby villages. So the uh, resistance is fairly organized. And we even have more troops coming in from this side as well. Rocket away! That's going to go right over the BMP. Oh, that was lucky. We've seen a lot of inaccurate rocket fire. Uh, oh, that one's going to hit the side of it. Is it going to be enough to knock it out? It's smoking. Yes, it's going to knock it out. I didn't expect it. I haven't seen the likes of it testing this scenario today. It is so interesting how this game continuously begins to surprise you. So that is a smaller, that's a Mujahideen victory in itself to bring down a Soviet armored vehicle. And another point that I wanted to make of this, but they're not really winning on this side though. Just catching this, the Soviet infantry is fighting the uh, Mujahideen back, but they're taking return fire. So it's an interesting combat situation going on up here. I love this, man. This mod is amazing. Hope you guys are enjoying this battle. I think it's... One of the better ones I've done, I spent so much time scripting, you have no idea. <laughs> All the vehicles and the reinforcements and stuff. It really does make for a pretty cool experience, though. So I would I would uh, classify these uh, compounds and buildings cleared of uh, enemy presence, but we'll have to take a look at casualties later. Of course, they do speak a different truth or story to the situation. So one BMP down. We've got uh, Company HQ over here. Captain. What's the Russian word for captain? I'm gonna Google that right now. It, it's probably just like a slightly different version of the word captain. Or not Russian version. I suppose technically it'd be Soviet version, but Russian as in Russian language. It's not called the Soviet language, obviously. So the reason why it's quite important to differentiate Soviets from Russians, because they are two entirely different things, of course, by calling these guys Russians, I'm essentially not doing the very Ukrainians and Lithuanians that were actually very much uh, a big part of this war. Like, uh, I do believe Lithuanians and Ukrainians were about the biggest uh, nationalities present in this war, as far as I'm concerned. Not Maybe not the biggest. I mean, there was thousands and thousands of troops. But um, they are obviously not Russian by today's standards. So all the nationalities the Soviet Union essentially engulfed, so to speak, um, would be uh, ignored if I just called these guys Russians. Um, so it's important. And that's something I've been trying to get over. Like it, It's a habit, of course, in popular knowledge. We refer to the entire area as just Russia, but it is it is ignorant uh, to do so. So it, it's just a habit.
How are we doing over here? Have we uh, beat back the resistance with a counterattack? I think we're doing pretty good. I think we can start recalling our troops now. The mission down here is uh, successful, but the fighting is continuing up here. Capitan. Of course, Capitan. Why is Google Translate when I'm doing Captain to, to Russian Captain? It gives me the English word Captain. Capitan. Of course it's Capitan. Ugh, Capitan. God damn it. Anyway, we've got a, a lieutenant here or something. Dude, they're going hard on these fighters. They're being pushed back. The Mujahideen is retreating. And it's a for war and fight, rather, they couldn't win. Um, and that's true, and that goes for the majority of the war. The Soviets won most of the battles. It's very true, they won uh, almost all battles, to be honest. But in the end, it was a struggle they could not continue. Or a war that could not continue. It just doesn't work when more and more Mujahideen fighters join the cause, and it just becomes a, a bloodier and bloodier war. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and end the conflict, but we're going to end it with uh, some casualty check. We'll put the uh, Soviets in a suitable red color and the Mujahideen in yellow. And down here, we've not taken many casualties. There's Mujahideen dying back here because they're being continuously... No! No! Damn it. They killed our uh, little mini knuckles back there. God damn it. So, we can tell that there is a larger amount of dead Soviets over here. We died clearing out some of the compounds and out here in the opening. Like, we've, we've taken a good dozen casualties, if not a little bit more than that. But we're looking at many, many more dozens of uh, Mujahideen casualties. And this is one of the cleaner operations I've seen. I expected more casualties, which is probably why there were some reinforcements in the first place, if you're asking me. But they just did a good job this time around. Lots of fighters dead around here by the stones, some in the open. And more are still alive back here and retreating. This is going to become a very long battle if we if we play this out entirely. So these fighters will live to fight another day, and so will whoever retreated back there. Also, way more explosions thanks than I expected. Two. I expected zero. Almost three. And one vehicle down. Very interesting. It's very interesting when you can spend hours working on a scenario, seeing, the, seeing a similar outcome all the time, and then when you click play to record, you're getting a whole different experience. So I don't fake my excitement when I tell you that it, it's different. And our Capitan is alive. Давай, товарищ капитан. Командир. Ура! Ура! Anyway, let's go ahead and end the video. I'll see you guys soon again. Ciao.